Hey guys, it's Ash, and in today's video, we're gonna be ranking every single brawler in the game in this tier list. All from one star to five stars. One star being the worst brawlers in the game, all the way to five stars for the best brawlers in the game right now in this current meta. Guys, all our ratings are based off of stats. From the highest trophy ranges in the game to the pro esports tournaments such as the recent monthly finals. Basically what the best players in every region of the world are playing, what they're banning, what they're winning with, with the highest win rate brawlers. Everything here combined into this one tier list. So let's start. So let's start from the bottom with the one star brawlers. I'd like to first mention that even though these brawlers are rated 1 star, they are not bad. No brawler is considered useless in Brawl Stars. In fact, a brawler like Daryl is very good on certain maps, especially on Heist. However, these brawlers, Frank, Chester, Grum, Janet, Squeak, Doug, Penny, and Daryl have all fallen to 1 star because there are much better other options because they're just not very good on most maps and game modes. The most surprising here is probably Grum, who is actually very strong in the lower trophy ranges, but against pro level competition, he struggles a lot as he's easy to dodge and can be easily countered by most other throwers, and especially common assassins and tanks. So all of these one star brawlers are very rarely seen in competitive play. You'll rarely see pro players playing them in tournaments in the current meta and pretty much Statistically, they're pretty low in high level competition and that's why they're one star. Next, at two stars, we have many commonly played brawlers on ladder, but they lack play rate in competitive play because there's mostly better options. We have Mortis, B, Willow, Surge, Primo, Shelly, Lou, Mandy, Gale, Maisie, Edgar, Terra, Bull, Ash, Otis, Hank, Barley, and the newest brawler, Lily. A brawler like Surge is actually very strong in low level play and is great against common tanks and assassins. However, in competitive play against great players, it can be very difficult to get supers and you don't want to be stuck in his slow form, making him a very risky pick. While a brawler like Mandy is very strong on knockout and bounty, but struggles on every other game mode. And nowadays, you just have too many better long range options in Angelo, Piper, Nanny, RT, and Bell. While brawlers like Mortis and Edgar are super popular in low ranges, but are very easily countered. The newest brawler, Lily, is a dangerous assassin, especially with her instant vanish gadget that allows her to escape or sneak into the shadow realm for 3 seconds whenever she wants. However, she hasn't really proven to be very strong because of her many limitations, such as a very short attack range and her heavy reliance on her trait to get supers. And unlike Cordelia's, her super does not go through walls, and so we're going to be placing her at 2 stars for now. Okay, okay, let's move on to the 3 star brawlers. We have brawlers that offer more utility and great on many game modes such as Tick, Eve, Fang, Miko, Bo, Poco, Bonnie, Gus, Jackie, Kit, Chuck, Mr. P, Dynamite, Spike, Pam, Buzz, Crow, and Draco. The most surprising here is probably Spike. And you guys may be wondering, what's up with Spike? He used to be a 5 star brawler. Well, the reason for Spike's downfall is that he got a recent nerf to his damage, making him significantly weaker now. While Kit has risen in the meta, being an amazing support with mobile brawlers, if you combine them with brawlers such as Miko and Mortis, with his healing cheeseburger gadget, he can be very strong. So he's very underrated right now. While Poco has been receiving buffs, and he's actually going under the radar as an amazing heal supporter with tanky high health compositions. Guys, Poco is so strong, he's very underrated right now. And the newest brawler, Draco, he's not released yet, but I'm predicting him to be in the middle somewhere because his dragon form doesn't have a lot of damage, but the reduced damage and fast movement speed makes him a pretty big threat, putting you and your team into a lot of pressure. However, he does have a lot of weaknesses such as his short range, making him pretty easy to counter by safely keeping your distance. All right, guys, let's move on to the big dogs, the four star brawlers. They are the more formidable threats in the meta. These are brawlers you're going to commonly see pros playing and banning a lot. We have Stu, Gray, Colt, 8 Bear, Rosa, Buster, Brock, Ruffs, Colette, Sprout, Sam, Pearl, Lola, Rico, Amber, Larry, and Laurie. 
Nita, Nanny, RT, Leon, Max, Griff, Carl, and BB. Now, many of these brawlers can even make a case for 5 stars, as Rico is insanely strong on maps with abundant walls, but due to his limited dominance in open area maps, he's a 4 star. Next, Max has a very high pick rate in the recent monthly finals thanks to her new hypercharge. I'm not going to be surprised if she moves up to 5 stars soon, but the biggest surprise here is probably Sam and BB who have finally moved up in a very long time. And they may not have the biggest, you know, highest play rate, but they are very strong last picks and they have had high win rates among pro, pro level competition. So it's only fair to put them at 4 stars. And then we have Leon and Pearl who have been receiving nerfs lately. So they've been falling a lot in the meta and I wouldn't be surprised if they fall down to 3 stars by next month. While buffs to Griff and Carl and RT's gadget change, Nita's new hypercharge have all given them nice boosts in the meta. Finally, at 5 stars, we have the best brawlers in the meta right now. You're gonna see these brawlers by pro players everywhere or banned. Melody and Angelo are currently the two of the best brawlers in the game right now, having high ban rates, high win rates. While Charlie has been getting a million nerfs, she's still the most played brawler by pros in the recent monthly finals. That's absolutely crazy. While Piper, Belle, Sandy, Meg, Cordelius, Jesse, Byron, and Jean have all had amazing stats all around. Now, some of you guys may be surprised with Byron, who had been in the bottom of the meta for a very long time, but he's finally made it back to the top. This is due to his recent buff. It was a big 11% increase to his damage and heal. And this has been really big because it quickly made Byron one of the most played brawlers with high win rate. While Sandy and Jean were already two very amazing powerful support brawlers and now they've been given the hypercharge, they've all moved up even more to the top. Sandy's hypercharge is probably the strongest in the game right now, silencing and boosting the speed of him and his teammates in the sandstorm. So there you guys have it, the complete current meta tier list. For all the brawlers in the game. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this was very valuable information. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you did. And also comment below. If you guys haven't subscribed yet. Make sure to do so. And I'll see you guys until next time. Take care.